to my live stream here on Leechess and Twitch. Hello, hello. Hello everyone, welcome to our chess stream. We're going to be celebrating early for the new year. You have a different voice every day, Macro Panda. Okay guys, um, let me change the stream title here. Make sure it's all set. Looks correct, but I'll take the time out. That's not really important. I like to put the time in just to give people an idea when the stream will start, because I'm changing the, the stream times here and there a bit. Um, 12, 15 Eastern Time, Monday. We'll just call it Monday. We'll just call it Blitz and Rapid Chess. Monday Blitz and Rapid Chess. All right, that's done. Good to go, guys. Let's get it started. Spectacular Camel, 100 for the new year. You said yourself, it's still six hours to the new year, Spectacular Camel. Now you have to make another donation when it's actually new year. Merle Dixon and Spectacular Camel, 101 and 100 bits. Thank you guys for supporting the stream. I want to thank Juicebox Wizard and Clash Kid for last week's donations. Really generous donations. It's a new week. It's Monday. So their fantastic donations are not showing up any longer. Our last stream of 2018 beginning here. If you'd like to play, please challenge me to something between 5 plus 3 and 7 plus 3. We're going to do a two-hour stream. Got to go visit my mom. She's in the hospital this afternoon. So rather than the, the two and a half hours, we're just doing a two-hour stream. We're going to play as much as we can. And then tomorrow, we're going to do the New Year's Day stream, just as usual. I think it'll be a Blitz tournament, viewer Blitz tournament arena here on leechess.org at 4.30 in the afternoon tomorrow. Spectacular Camel says, I can forget about the extra donation. He put five in for tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Asturbate with commercials. Yeah, my mom is, um, she's been suffering from a kidney infection since last week. That's why they canceled a couple of streams last week. Um, I just got my mom home from, from rehabilitation for a fall she had. And then, uh, and then she turns around and has a kidney infection. Um, she's elderly and the uh, health problems start to pile up. So, um, she's all right at the moment, but it's really complicated because she's allergic to like penicillin. So they have to, they have to put her on some kind of IV antibiotic that's kind of rare and it's only given in IV form. So it's kind of a logistical problem. Um, Spectacular, Spectacular Camel uh, wanted to be number one again. Spectacular Camel. Make the Camel great again. <laughs> Spectacular Camel with 105. Merle Dixon with 101. Acerbate with two bits, guys. Let's get it started. So Radagast is challenging me. Radagast. Radagast, are you a subscriber to the stream? Now remind me. Are you allergic to penicillin? I am too. I think it might be genetic. Um, I'm not sure because my mother and I are both, uh, my father wasn't, but my mother and I are both allergic to, to penicillin-based antibiotics, so it does complicate life a little bit. Um, Nils is in the house, and uh, Radagast, remind me if you're a subscriber or not. Dim donated 250 to be the, the bit leader for the week. It's chilly here, guys. Temperature dropped. It was... Um, Temperature dropped. It was it was a lot warmer for a day or two here, but now it's like freezing again. So I don't know if Radagast is a subscriber. Subscriber, we will find out. I'm gonna take Nils first because he is he is a subscriber, for sure. Brad, are you are you subscribed to my channel? Because I take the subscribers first on Mondays, Mondays and Wednesdays. All right, you will get to play, but you're gonna have to wait till our subscribers are playing first. I mean, if there's no other challenges, I'll take Rad the Red next, but he'll have to wait till subscribers are done. So Nils is playing D4. What else can I do with Nils to try to keep him off balance? It's not a weird Wednesday. Um, I, I, just, I should be trying to play my, my normal stuff, but let's play G6. JCS. Is JCS in the house? Soltigo is not going to be a moderator anymore. Too stressful. But he went pretty... Pretty pretty long. JCS is here. Good to see you. 
JCS, tell me when you get burnt out because we'll have to find a replacement. We probably should find another another moderator in in the short term because I don't want JCS to get burnt out too. All right, so Nils is playing. Um, yeah, allowing the 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 Jinji India. Some people call it the British call this the bee feeder attack. I like that. I like bee feeder. You guys ever buy me a drink? You can get me a, a gin martini. Pretty strong stuff. Haven't had one in a while. I get a little out of control after too many martinis. Don't want to drink them at home. It's too dangerous. Bishop takes c3, b takes c, f5, g Indian. Clash Kid wanted to buy mod status for 100k bits. I would definitely do that. Clash kit. I would definitely. We could definitely arrange that. But you won't be an abusive mod, right? Clash kit. Good to see you. You won't abuse your powers, will you? <laughs> we've had. We've had one moderator who abused his powers. He's not with us any longer. chilly here. I would definitely not turn you down on that clash, kid. So now, knight f3. The sharpest moves are um, h4 and let's see, e4. h4, e4. Knight f3 is kind of a routine move. Alright. Usually, the GG Indian works well um, against players to a, to a degree. Until they figure out like a good a good system. I mean, I don't think it's ever been refuted. I've had a lot of interesting games at this opening, but it's definitely best not to play it repeatedly against the same players over and over again. The knight on f3, um, you know, sometimes it's interesting to play the knight to like h3 to get get this knight f4 going on. I definitely would take the deal from Clash Kid. I I will agree to that. I mean, Clash Kid is a is a credible and honorable member of the stream in the first place. I certainly wouldn't mind him being a moderator. Um, Rad the Brown has subscribed with a tier 1 sub, so E3. This is good. We've got a good situation here. I have no interest in taking this pawn. Maybe I should consider it, but it's just too greedy. Masturbate. Every bit counts. Another commercial. And Percy Hepworth doing 103. Happy New Year in advance, guys. It's not New Year yet. My family, my my wife and my kids are in Europe, like many of you guys. So it's, what, 6 o'clock in Europe. Um, it won't be New Year's over there in Hungary, my other residence, until about six, f five and a half hours from now. Um, here we've got quite a ways to go. Percy Hepworth in the UK you got uh you got about so seven hours to go. Getting into the top three for the week. The bishop is hev is heavy. Knight need this bishop is heavy. Both these bishops, man, this is the whole idea of the Jinji Indian, you know. It's like a Nimzo. Wanna make your bishops bad again. Watch some more commercials, Astrobate. Rad the Brown, thank you for subscribing, guys. Bishop E2. Quiet. Quietly. So now knight e4. It still feels like going after this pawn is a greedy thing to do. I, I don't have any interest in winning the pawn, per se. The strategic goals are more important. Merle Dixon, 625 in Budapest now. He set up dual clocks just for me. Merle Dixon, you're not in Budapest, are you? You never did tell us where you are. Do you play small pocket pairs under the gun? Um, of course, if you're deep stack, Clash Kid. I would never, you know, do that in like a sit and go or something. All right. 
Yeah, you're set mining. Poker advice. Free poker advice for 100,000 bits. In MTTs or multi-table poker tournaments, you know, the small pocket pairs are very valuable in any position. But the question is at what point you stop playing them. You know, 50 big blinds, 100 big blinds, 60 big blinds. Some people will play them with, like, you know, less, and it's sort of stupid. Anyway, you don't know what I'm talking about unless you play poker. All right, so here we go. So knight e4. Um, I think I'm just interested in developing my pieces here. And where to put the king ultimately? Ancient G. Ashvili was a player who I worked with a lot. He kind of helped to pioneer this system. Um, this knight either goes to e5 or to b6. This is often like a kind of pivotal strategic decision for black. Which way to go here? We can go with knight b6, um, maybe use the white squares, try to pick off that pawn on c4. We've really got else in a strategic sort of situation he's obviously not super familiar with. So he played knight d2, he's got c4 protected, it gives him the power to play e4. Um, on knight e5, he can extricate my knight. I don't know if you call it extricate, I should say. A uh, different adjective or verb, that's a verb, right? Different description. Not extricate. He'd be extricating himself, but he should kick my knight off of e5 if I play there. So there's a number of questions here. Um, what do I do? Do we go with? Do we go with the knight b6? Is it possible this is a mistake? Jim is in the first spot with 250 bits. Guys, thank you all of you for donating. Is my Eastern European accent more pronounced for the one of Jinji? Now, Jinji has a pretty... That Georgian, his Georgian accent is a little harsher. Jinji just sees he's, he's a big bear and he has a very big chest and he has a, a little bit of a deeper voice. So It sounds more pronounced with a deeper voice. Um, by the way, I found out that my nephew, have, my mother's doctor is not Russian. She's from Uzbekistan. So, that's the different. Uzbek doctors are different. Just to keep you informed on the doctor front. Um, Alright. I was wrong. Bishop d7. Close enough. Cold here. He's breaking through with e4. Um, what's not really threatening anything? I guess to take on f5 is a threat of some sense. In some sense. Hmm. What if I play like queen a4? Kind of a weird move. Pressurizing a lot of points, but Nils would get some play along the e-file here, but I think at this point that's sort of inevitable. I mean, I guess if I really wanted to, I could do a crazy... No, f4 is not going to work. Um, he played queen d3. Hmm. This is a useful move in the French winner as well. I mean, we're pressurizing c4. I stopped a4, which is a very valuable resource. He could have considered that before. I mean, f4 is an option here. Quite double-edged. Just realize he has bishop d1, but that's kind of a weird move. This f4, controversial. It doesn't take much to get Nils to sacrifice with e5. I know that. He did it! I like clicked on it and it made the move. That's so crazy. I made your move for you, Nils. Did you guys see that? I literally made his move. He's in bad time pressure now. His queen is practically trapped. Wow. 
It's like total desperation for white. Yeah, I had I had a conversation with Nefrov on Skype. He does sound like Count Chocula. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right, so if if I take on d6, he takes on b7 with counterplay. The dangerous Nils. Queens are off the board. We're still up our extra pawn. He's going to get a little bit of counterplay. Active king. Active player never cries. A4. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Well, this could be risky. <laughs> Wait a minute. My f4 pawn is going to go with check. We don't want that. Just keeping him contained here. That's all right. You got to give Ned Nils credit. You know, he's done a really good job staying alive here from worst position. Really good job. The moves seem to be coming fast and furious. Now I get a phone call. I'm sorry, she's not available now. Um, there is an issue. This is, uh, sorry, I was kind of distracted when I took your call. Um, she's been admitted to Cape Town Hospital. Try to offer Nils a draw. This is there's an asterisk, an asterisk next to this game, Nils, for the rest of your life. I had to take the calls from the doctor, and uh, you're gonna you're never gonna live this win down, man. You're never gonna live this win down. No mercy. It was a one-sided victory. That's what they said here. One-sided victory for Nils. He knew I was desperate, offering a draw in a slightly better position. And, and he wouldn't take it. I'll never forgive you for this. All right, that's the way we're going to play. Ruthless, ruthless. All right, guys, let's go on to the next game. Um, Clash Kid is up next. We're taking our uh, subscribers first. I thought I could answer the call and, and manage to make the moves, but 
immediately on almost the first move I flagged. Alright, E4. Let's see here. Not good at multitasking. Clash Kid again. Cardiologist, cardiologist calling. Alright, Knight F3 here. The cardiologist saved Nils. Is there still time to enter a chat? Absolutely, Chess Drake. I'm going to take the challengers who are subscribers first. And then Radagast is the first non subscriber. He actually dropped down in the list. But he was the first non subscriber to uh, to offer a challenge. So, Knight F3. What are we going to try here against Clash Kit? I think I must have played this before. Sorry I had to take that call, though. I didn't know if I would. If I would be able to get them back on the line if I didn't answer the call. You know, when you call like doctor's offices and stuff like that, they put you on hold for forever. So when I saw where it was from, I was like, man, I better answer this call or I'll have to wait on hold later for like an hour. Um, A4 right against A6. This is kind of reactionary. So Nils got, he got the win and uh, oh, Rad the Brown's now a subscriber. I forgot Rad the Brown. So you're up next. All right. Yeah, of course you're a subscriber now. <laughs> All right. A4. Kind of reactionary move. What's the best way to take advantage of this? If there is a way to take advantage of this. I guess there's nothing special. Um. I mean, D6 gives white lots of options. D6. D4. That does take him out of his... uh. It takes him out of his check over variation, which he was playing. Was your e five d six pawn sack any good? I don't, I don't think so, Nils. But I don't think anything was any good, you know. So honestly, on a practical level, it wasn't as good as your other days. <laughs> e five pawn sacrifice, though, that was that was truly good. I looked at that, you know, the e five and the Benoni you played the other day. Well, we looked at it on the stream. That was really strong. Okay, so now knights to c3, and he's starting d4 um, to transpose to a knight or after knight f6. So we need to think about, can we play e5? I don't know, because that bishop c4 would seem like a fairly favorable close Sicilian, wouldn't it? I would think that would be a fairly favorable line. e5, bishop c4. So we'll just transpose. I mean, there's nothing better than transposing to the Skavenigan or Nidorf. Dragondorf with g6. We could play. Anything between 5 plus 3 and 7 plus 3 for the challenges. So 5, 3, 5, 4, 5, 5, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 5. And 7, 3 being the uppermost limit. Um, you have to lose to a 10k donator. No, I don't. <laughs> I did that oddly once when someone made a huge donation. I dropped the queen against them. Everyone thought it was like a conspiracy. But no. All right, I don't know. So what does this transpose to? After knight c6, d4, cd, knight takes d4, knight f6. That's a, that's a Kamsky line, actually. That would be the position where Kamsky played a5. This is Kamsky to Palov. After pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, knight f6, a5. I mean, I guess black could play a different move here. There's no threat of, like, c4. So technically, you could leave leave theory with bishop d7. I have no idea what this is. We're just making it up. But I know knight f6 is, is the kamsky Topalov game. Another nice Kamsky game got a playing a against the Knight Orf uh, from Aeroflot two years ago. I don't remember who he was playing against. I think I made a video about the game for Chester.com last year or year before last. God, I had played A5. Knight F6, A5. Because if um, Knight takes A5, Wade has a very strong rejoinder. I guess like Knight D5 or something like that. I can't remember now. All right, guys, no more Mr. Nice Guy with the phone calls. Because my mom is in... I, I normally turn the phone off, but because my mom is in the hospital, um, I've got to be prepared to take medical-related phone calls on my mobile. So, 
We confused Clash Kid with Bishop D7. Clash Kid is a good player, but he's not really that into opening theory as some people. And so we can get him out of his comfort zone, maybe. Um, so the next challenger should be Rad the Red, um, or Radagast, and then we'll play the next subscriber. And I can't, I'm going to play all the people who are not subscribers to the stream. If we run out of subscribers to play like Drake, um, then we will take the non-subscriber challenges. Mondays and Wednesdays, I play subscribers first. And on Friday, I also have open challenges on Fridays when I just take everyone's challenges in order. I want to wish everybody a happy new year. Clash Kid, what's up, man? I hope that you're... I hope that you're not disconnected or something. Now, here you can play knight b3 at any point, avoiding exchanges of pieces. I think that kind of makes some sense. You know, now it feels like I should play a dragon. Dragon is a little more safe than, than the Skaven Ingun with e6. Some Greek Grandmaster Grivas wrote a book on that Queen B6 Sicilian you played yesterday. Yes. I have the book, and there's a funny story about that. Um, there was an article in New in Chess Magazine about the Queen B6 years ago, and I had a funny anecdote. New in Chess yearbook had a letter to the editor from this guy I know who's kind of, he's kind of a dick. And uh, he wrote this letter to the editor of... <laughs> of New and Chess yearbook and he was complaining about Grivas having the audacity to name the Queen B6 <laughs> Sicilian after himself, you know. But basically Grivas has as much games as anyone in that system had really I think every right to call it the Grivas Sicilian. And Weiner like wrote in and, and like criticized him for doing that. But but Grivas wrote a, a seething like response and just trashed the guy. <laughs> Who I know again. Um, yeah. I have a game in there, I think. Actually, Chester. I thought I had a game in there. I don't think I own that book, but I did peruse it. So if you look in there carefully, you might find one or two references to my games. Um, though I stopped playing that a while ago because it lost its. The Queen B6 Sicilian kind of lost its surprise value. Um. Some Greek grandmaster. Jim is like, LOL. Some random Greek grandmaster. He seems like a good guy. He played in Budapest, but that wasn't when I was there. I think before I went to Budapest. He played in some tournaments there. Or maybe like when I was just... When I wasn't in the area. He's played in the first Saturday grandmaster tournaments in Hungary. Might have even earned his GM title um, some of those events years ago. That's before my time, though. All right, so we've got a kind of classic, classical Sicilian now. So I can play to g4, but after knight g4, knight takes g4, bishop takes g4. He doesn't have to take the bishop. He could just play like queen d2 or something. That's something that I don't particularly find interesting. Bishop g4, on the other hand, might be interesting. Bishop g4. Knight takes c6. Bishop takes f3. Knight takes e7 check would win a pawn. So that's no good. So what do we do? I mean, rook c8 looks like pretty standard move here. Sometimes the queen gets kind of boxed in. But a standard plan would be to sack the exchange on c3. Probably something I've used against Clash Kid before. If I remember, I might be mixing up games, though. There was a game a couple weeks ago where I sacked an exchange against somebody, one of the better, higher-rated players on the stream, and I, was, I thought it was a promising exchange sack, but I ended up losing. Maybe that was against the Blue-Eyed Albino. Yeah, the variation that Chester just put in there. So, 
some sort of castling queen side. I think the castling queen side is, is much less common as I said last I said on Sunday. When was it? On Sunday? Not that common to castle queen side. Usually you castle king side and you play like a kind of classical Skaven Ingen for a while. A pretty good classical Skaven Ingen. So knight d5, e d5, knight d4, bishop d4, b4, queen d4, rook takes c2. And I'm not sure what Clash Kid has in mind here. So we're just winning a pawn. No. But this move is not so good for white, is it? Are we winning a piece? Clap kid. Making a donation. Not a financial donation. It's a material donation. Okay. It's all right. It's New Year's. It's New Year's Clash Kid. You'll be forgiven. That was your last bad game of 2018. I'm going to play Radagast, who just subscribed to the stream. I think you just have to recapture on d4 and hope you have a little bit of compensation when capture on c2 there in terms of space you have some station clash kid so like most people the danger is when you panic you know the danger is like panicking when things go bad you can always find a way to panic and make them worse um all right on wednesday i'm going to be playing a stream where i play unusual openings but today we're just going to play our straight up normal stuff to um yeah i mean what happened to you there clash kid it's the classic like mirage effect or oasis you know the mirage oasis effect basically when things start to get desperate and you start to run out of water you start to hallucinate that you see a <laughs> you see a mirage or oasis in the desert that's not really there clash kid thanks so much man bishop e7 so standard Royal Lopez here. Happy New Year to you, Clash Kid. Thanks for supporting our stream. Bishop C4. I mean C2. Yeah, this is not a normal move. I'm, I'm supposed to play... Well, I'm going to try something different here. I got seven challenges. Again, we're going to take subscribers first. So, Drake and FF. And then in order of business. So, Radagast gave up his strong point here on, on D4. This is interesting. Pretty much everyone plays Bishop G4 here. So, my assumption is that this is not a great line for black. It doesn't make this any easier to play. He's going to do bishop g4 now. I can't remember if I ever looked at this. Right, okay, bishop e3. So this seems vaguely familiar. It's like a transposition. a3 was Swiddler series. Wait, move 11, what are you talking about? Like here? Where? I mean, instead of c3? Like playing in a3 instead of c3 in this position, move 11. d3, yeah. 
So this this is normally like bishop g4 first. He tricked me, you know? The thing is, he, he freaking tricked me because I wasn't going to play this line. I was going to play after d4, bishop g4. Sorry. After d4, bishop g4, I was going to play d5, which is another variation. But Radagast like forced me to play like as if I played bishop e3. I never did meet Bobby Fischer. I had friends who saw him there when I was there. And um, one degree of separation, really, is the closest I've ever been to Fischer. But I told a story about how he called my friend's house and tried to set up a match with the best Iraqi player with Saddam Hussein. I was in the apartment when Fisher called, but I never actually talked to him or met him personally. He was in Budapest for quite a while. Quite a while. I'm not sure exactly how long. He was there for, for a long time. Seemed to like it. I have friends, so I have some Mexican chess playing friends who were in Budapest a lot and and they had a friend who like, was a cook in a Mexican restaurant where Fisher liked to frequent. And uh, so they could sometimes get him to the Mexican restaurant. This is actually an old trick. Like, if you want to find Bobby Fisher, according to Andrew Soltis, like, you used to be able to find him by his favorite, his favorite uh, restaurants back in the day, you know, like in New York, when he was missing. They would do it that way. So, Radagast, I'm playing two systems here I've never really used too much. I got kind of bored with the, the standard main lines with white, and, and this also avoids, well, again, like all these main line variations. This looks pretty normal. I have some old book on the on the Lopez, like uh, the original Swayton Schachvillag from Germany. Um, book from like the 80s and uh, there was a really nice series of opening books from the, the German publishing house um, Sport for Lag, sorry and uh, and they the Sweden had a had a nice book on, on the Royal Lopez I probably looked at this line in there um, I've glanced at it I la actually lost a game against um, maybe this exact position I lost a game with he said Nunes not too long ago in this position. So basically Radagast is just copying my game with Hissit Nunes. One of my good friends analyzed the Fisher and Laco at the Mexican restaurant. And he said this is when Laco was becoming really, really strong. And, uh, you know, near his peak. And basically, my friend who's a strong player, he said the difference between Laco and Fisher was, was astounding. In terms of analysis, like, Fisher was just so much more insightful and and, and brilliant. All right. The Happy New Year, guys. Thanks for the support. Jim, Spectacular Camel, Percy Hepworth, everybody. JCS, thanks for being here to moderate. Good to see you, Move 11. Oh, there's a great video of YouTube on YouTube of Laco telling Fisher story. That's interesting. Probably a different one. I mean, Laco probably met with him a lot, I would imagine. And, and even the Polgar you know, the Polgar sisters, but primarily, primarily you did, um, actually I had a relationship with, not that kind of relationship, but some sort of friendly relationship with Fisher, which was typical of Bobby, like totally inconsistent, you know, he, he claimed, you know, he hated Jews, yet, you know, he's friends with the Polgars who are, who are Jewish, um, a lot of his, his life was, you know, very inconsistent, um, all right, Knight on BD2. 
Lico analyzing Fisher. He woke up from sleeping in his desk, and Fisher slams down the best food on the board instantaneously. Once I met Lilienthal. Yeah, I have a picture of Lilienthal with Fisher. New Year's 1992 or something like that. Fisher's with, like, Lilienthal and his wife. That's weird. I think I had my Facebook. Um, sorry, I just had a weird pain in my head. Um, I just had a Facebook friend recommendation of one of like Lilienthal's relatives. Maybe his his daughter or his his wife. When I was going through my Facebook friend recommendations, funny that you mentioned that. B takes C4. Now we just try to blockade. Try. Another interesting move would be Rook E3. Man, this is a tough game. Radagast is strong. Obviously, I have to play this. What to recommend here for black? Losing ground on the queen side. Bishop a5 could be hugely problematic. Very difficult to get out of that pin. Well, now it's not so big a deal. Right, queen b1 is a classic solution. Not really a great square for me, though. We'll just take some space. Quaz just subscribed with Twitch Prime. That's our second subscriber today, guys. Nice job. Thanks so much for supporting the stream. Infinite Flash Chess, welcome. All right. He frees the, the c8 square. Threat is stronger than the execution. What's the plan now? Not really sure what my plan is. Transfer. What's Rook B7 about? I don't like it when people make moves that I don't understand. It makes me nervous. That's a little too much retreating. Actually, I have Queen B1. Eh. Yeah, let's just forget it. He's too tied up on the Queen side. This can't be good for Black. Too much space. Move 11, thank you. Commercial donation. Knight G5 loses a piece. Queen B1. Very primitive move. Basically a cheapo. What is this like a... No, this move may be alright. Now I win a piece. But really... Queen B1 kind of a cheapo. So we, we get that. Yeah, it's not that bad for black, maybe. He lost on time. But now he's got really good counterplay. I mean, knight c3 was a blunder. <laughs> um, man. All right, tough game. Let's go on. We managed to eke one out. Drake is up next. It makes me nervous when people make moves I don't understand. 
I don't want to. I want to understand what's happening, you know, and it means I'm missing something. We just hope that they're. We just hope that they're just making ridiculous moves, <laughs> and there is nothing to understand, basically. Second modern defense. Save a dog is also a subscriber. All right, so save a dog, Nefidov. Those guys will be next. Thanks for reminding me of that. Merle Dixon. Merle Dixon for moderator. Well, this Clash Kid picks up the offer to submit a hundred thousand bit donation. Um. No, but you don't skip the line. It's just that we we have non subscribers challenging me. And then we take the subscribers first, and then we start over with the guys who are not subscribers. This position always bothered me. I always wanted to find the kind of good waiting move here, but none exists. Like rook b8 is kind of artificial, and e6. There is no good waiting move for black in this position. That's ultimately the problem. Ultimately the problem. So we're going to be streaming till 2.15, a little bit after 2.15. Good to see you guys. Have a happy new year. Have I checked the Blizzard Rapid from St. Petersburg? No, too wrapped up in my own problems. I haven't had any extracurricular chess time, unfortunately. It's all I can do to get the stream on. All right, so yeah, here we run out of moves. We gotta do e6. According to my repertoire, this is the only move that works. Now I have to lose the tempo. I've been doing this for a long time. Well, Drake has a wide, wide variety of openings. Bishop e3, this is a position I've actually played with colors reversed, I think, oddly enough. Can I request either a Rolipez exchange or Berlin endgame during stream sometime? For move 11, we'll make an exception. You can request your opening. This guy, Drake, doesn't have a great score against me, but he always seems to get a good opening. It's kind of an unusual setup playing bishop e3 with knight on bd2, though. Uh, I'm scared he may know more than me. Maybe not, though. It looks like he's gone back into kind of normal territory now with knight to c4. When bishop e3 may not necessarily be that good of a move. d5 would drop a pawn. We don't want to do that. But f5 makes more sense. On the other hand, this knight doesn't have a place to go, so we could just develop our pieces here. You know, there's something weird about bishop b3. I mean, in con, in, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, he plays too fast. In combination was what I was trying to say. In combination with a3 and knight c4, I'm not so sure that bishop e3 really makes a lot of sense there. Eventually, I mean, just f5 is an idea. Maybe this is more solid. I don't know. Could even play b5 now. But typically, I try to play more solidly. b6. I remember a game against Zivak Krecek, who I played in the New York Open, where I like, took his knight on c4. It was ridiculous. I had to be tortured for 110 moves. And finally drew. Um, a very strong Czech Grandmaster. Project was like 2600. It was horrible. I'm going to do this. I don't know if this is even good here though. Normally not an option, but in this position it might be alright.
Lord of the Rings. I was about to lose on time, though. Either of us could have lost on time. So move 11 requests a Royal Lopez exchange. Oh, God. Royal Lopez exchange is not my specialty. This is a John Fedorovich thing. He, he doesn't mind doing this, but... Okay, there is F5 here. Actually. I never liked exchanging B4. John would do that in, like, play A5. But it just seems to trade everything off um, in this kind of structure. I remember he had a draw against some someone in the game I saw. Here I have a concrete threat now. Another guy talking to himself. Are you talking about me, Astro B? All I'm doing is talking to myself. But that's good. No one can argue with you. <laughs> that's the virtue of talking to yourself. Unless you're totally schizophrenic. At least, you know. Are you talking about the literal Radgast from The Lord of the Rings? I didn't really get it. You know, I thought you were just talking about the name. But now you're actually talking about the personalities of the character in the movie. Um, is that what we're doing? Where we're going with this? Knight B3. The million dollar question. Right, so F4. The Dvoretsky lessons. This is Mark's system that he recommended to me to play. And I've always used this against Kings at the End with, with some success. But I'll still never understand <laughs> what made me take like Krachek's knight on c4 with my white squared bishop. It was a very strange positional decision. And that was a funny game where Krachek like moved his king all around the board, the queen side with like king f1, king e2, king d3, king c2, and then and proceeded to like try to attack me after a hundred moves on the other side. That was also the New York Open where Carol Jarecki attempted to kick me out of the roped-off area. She's an arbiter in the New York Open. <laughs> she actually did this to me twice. Like, no respect. Like, two times I'm playing international tournaments, and, and this arbiter tries to kick me out, even though I'm a player in the roped-off area. It's really this, you know? It's like, I'm playing in this area. What, what are you talking about? Bishop C1. gotta go. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Man, this guy calculates well. How about Bishop G4? Another Lord of the Rings reference. There and back again. If we're gonna make Lord of the Rings references... E takes d4, knight takes d4, knight takes d4, knight takes d4. That all seems to pan out for white rather nicely. This guy is awfully good. I've said that before. We go back. So knight d4, much obligatory. Drake 1980, I mean, how are you, I mean, you are good, dude. He's 1600 in bullet, but he's faster than me. He's still got a good position. Maybe, maybe not. All right, maybe it's not that good. Queen d3. That's kind of an annoying move, though. <sighs> right. I mean, if 
between his speed and his pretty good play, it's hard to believe that Drake 1980 is 1776 Lee Chess. Despite his bad score against me, he, he's never really played a bad game. Um, now we might have to take that. That sort of sucks. I didn't really want to give up my white square bishop here. Seems to be my modus operandi against Sidnek and against Drake now. Having to give up my white square bishop to protect my pawn. There's knight, knight g6, knight takes d4, knight, knight f3, which doesn't seem to work. Um, just losing pawns. I, I don't know. Then I'm like, queen takes b5. I guess this is good enough. We're still, you know, superior here with the powerful pawn. And threats. But I just hate giving up my my good bishop. Being two minutes behind, I used to be handsome. Yeah, well, Carol Jarecki is like as old as my mom, so... <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. She just liked kicking me out of roped off areas and being a busybody. It was funny the first time, but the second time she did it in another tournament, I was like, you gotta be kidding me. You're kicking me out again? Um, she's all right. We got along later. I asked her to move Andre Volokitin's feet from under my, from under my chair in protest. Can we sack and exchange on F3? Well, that's an interesting idea. I mean, we got these tactics flowing here. Now, black's looking pretty good. Despite white having the two bishops, um, we have the powerful pawn and active pieces. It should compensate more than compensate for the more than compensate for the deficiencies. He just keeps, he keeps staying alive. Maybe I missed a strong move there. Queen f7. Can always defend against that though. It's pretty easy to do. We're gonna need more. It's like that insurance commercial that's gone around. Did you get more? All right, that's not what I expected. This is probably a mistake. He's always ahead on the clock, no matter what I do. His defense is like perfect. Yeah, that's the perfect move. I mean, he's faster than me, stronger than me. Maybe I had knight e5 here, and I can't play knight e5. I could play knight e5, actually. Okay, this is finally looking like a mistake. An impulsive move. Leaving black with a superior endgame. He was doing great until he made this one impulsive move. Well, it's like suicide to give me two connected pass pawns. Everything was under control till that happened. Rook a2, brilliancy. Defending everything, getting his rook off the long diagonal. I was dreading that move. Still not that easy. I think there he should try king e2. 
This way is, yeah, he's he's lost. Similar to my last simul game yesterday. Okay, so just a few moves from from maybe even being slightly better there, Drake. Nice effort. So save a dog and then Nefedov. These poor guys who are not subscribers just need to subscribe. Z Fox is right. Now, I like Z Fox. He makes very, very sort of logical and thought out, you know, suggestions. I mean, A5 was my original plan, and then I changed my mind and played, played Queen F7, which was basically just a stupid move. So I should have done A5, and and then A2 doesn't work. On A5, he probably would have to take on A5 and play a completely different type of structure. Good game, guys. We've got another hour left in the stream today. Save dog, what do you play? I don't recall what Save a Dog plays against uh, D4. We've got a lot of games too. Kumar Toha. Who is that? A long time. Tamalur. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. So, Fuchsia, hello. Yeah, I mean, it was like Volokitin just wanted to provoke me by putting his, peed on, his, peed, his feet under my chair. And when he saw it, it annoyed me. He didn't move them away. The problem was he was a miner, so I couldn't, like, beat him up or something. This is not the first time I had this issue. Boris Kreiman did it when he was... A teenager as well. Um, you just want to like threaten them or something, but you can't because they're like under eighteen. So it would be different if it was another adult. You know, you could kind of be more aggressive about it. But I had to ask the arbiter to actually come to the board and remove his feet from under my chair, which is distracting. And and you know, you should be concentrating on playing chess, not having to ask arbiters to remove people's feet from under your chair. But it's always like a short, for some reason, whenever it happens, like a short teenager who's doing it, you know, and you're like, well, how is it that a short teenager's feet are under my chair? It's not like it's like a really tall person. So they're definitely doing it on purpose. They have to like stretch to get their feet underneath your chair. Move 11, does this look familiar? You, you know, your game actually featured C6. This is slightly different. Black hasn't wasted time with c6 as I saw in another game. So now I think we have to really think about... Well, e4 is not a threat because he doesn't have c6 to support it. Yeah, this is a different scenario. This is actually King's Indian, though, not an old Indian. I looked at a similar line with... You can have your feedback after the game. <laughs> Happy New Year's Eve. And to some people, like Juicebox Wizard in Cambodia, it's already New Year. Anybody here where it's already New Year? Do we have anyone in the house, actually, from Southeast Asia? Something like that. There'll be no Night F5 anytime soon. <laughs> night F5. Yes. No bishop on G6. The black can play E4 and have it supported and d5. That's why like c6 is probably a standard move here. h6 not quite as constructive. I'm not in Cambodia. One of our viewers who made a really generous donation to the stream this week, um, Juicebox Wizard, is actually in Cambodia. I'm in the United States. I normally live in Hungary, but I'm, I'm back in the United States to help my mom who's been who's been ill for the last couple of months. So, it's cold here in Massachusetts. There it is. We're ready to play E4. So now we've like transposed into some kind of mainline, some sort of mainline Fianchetto variation. I'm not sure about my setter with Queen C2 and Rook D1 as opposed to other lines, how this stacks up for white. Merle won. Merle won. Merle Dixon gifted a tier one sub to Super Sebi. 
and has given two gift subs in the channel. When it says that you've given two gift subs in the channel, thanks for the beard comment. Um, how long since I was in Hungary? I was in a Hungary. I was in Hungary in October. I've been here since October. Um, yeah, people keep saying, "Hey, you're such a nice son," but like, who doesn't take care? Of I mean, do you like if your parents are not well? Like, do you not help them, or is that normal? Um, yeah, thanks for the wishes. I'm not staying here permanently. I mean, you never know, though. So when it says you, you've given two gift subs on the channel, is that like all time or within a certain time period? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, everybody's like, you're such a good son. I'm kind of like, well, what's the alternative? You like let your parents die and not even care? or How does it work? <laughs> um, all right, queen c7. What do we do? How dare you call me a good guy? <laughs> e4, queen c7. It always irks me. People say I'm a good guy. So queen c7, I always think, is like a bad square in the king's Indian. But it does create some strange situations sometimes when the queens are on c2 and c7. It's always a little strange. What if I play c5 here? He takes on c5, I take on e5, he takes back, take. I had a game where I got just ripped apart by Quang Liam in this type of thing. But it was actually a peer, it's, a Fianchetto peer, it's not a King's Indian. But the same thing might be applicable here. We try c5 takes, d, e, knight c5, knight takes c5. Do we just roll the pawns? wonder if that would work here. We do the Quang Liam. And then f4. Basically just roll him. I don't know. I'm going to try it. It's fun. Dim, thank you for the donation. Social media has made it apparent people don't have parents or had parents they resented when they're adults. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's easy to take advantage. Take advantage. Take for granted. Um... You know, if you have a good, normal relationship with your parents, it's easy to take it for granted. I mean, obviously, that's not the case for everyone. If you have resentment or you've been neglected or, you know, your life has just not been that well, you know. I'm sure that a lot of people hate their parents. Luckily, I don't have that. I don't have that issue. Total gift subs of all time. So Merle Dixon now has two total gift subs of all time. All right, so here, I didn't calculate all that much, actually. Do I prefer living in Hungary or the United States? You know, that's a really tough question to answer. They're very different. Um, and I get homesick when I'm over there. Honestly, I think I like living in the city. I used to live in Boston. I mean, that was probably my favorite place to live. Honestly. Living in Boston. I have a bad feeling about this. My original plan was to play F4. I guess we're just going to stick with it. Amazon shopping treasure truck is in Boston. This literally popped up when I said the word Boston. Now that that's tell me that's not like Amazon spying on my my voice. My mobile phone's voice app or something. My microphone. How is it that the Amazon treasure truck popping up in Boston appears the moment I say my favorite place to live was in Boston? That's very strange. Suspicious. All right, so Save a Dog chose not to play it, but it looked like Queen H5, man. You you know, you got a sack of peace here, probably. Queen H5, G4, and then you, you play, like, maybe Knight takes G4, H takes G4, Bishop takes G4. And just, you turn into a virtual Mamajarov. 
in that position. Very interesting stuff. So I think this was a little, a little too passive. The other option that he had was um, queen take d5. I'm sorry. Before he took on e5, he could have also played knight h7, which isn't that ridiculous either. I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. I mean, Amazon treasure truck in Boston goes through my mobile phone notification here the moment I say Boston. This is basically the position I was playing for. He's let me achieve it with like a pawn sacrifice with a bind on d6. This is borrowed from another Fianchetto variation of the King's Indian with queen, queen b6. One of the more important theoretical lines, which Kasparov actually played with black, involved um, queen b6 in the main lines. And, and involves a pawn sacrifice with c5, which is really, really critical. And the same basic idea here. Black is sort of disrupted, and the coordination is, is messed up. But the beard is, is getting itchy. I think we're going to have to trim it up. Um, now I have a sure ticket to Slaggy's games. So Anonymous can now challenge me at will in the streams. So that's Baleful. So we got Nefidov, Baleful, Haberbaum as subscribers. And then whoever else we can fit in in the next 45 minutes or so. I am going to be back tomorrow night, guys. It's 4.30 on New Year's Day, 4.30 p.m. We're going to have an arena blitz event. Okay, this is a nasty move because he's got some ideas. I mean, this primarily coming in here. But I don't think this is necessarily his most stubborn move. I mean, he, I guess he couldn't play b6 because of knight d6, though. Actually, what's he supposed to do there? I think white's better, but there's no, um, there's also bishop f5 in the offing. So we play knight d6, and we try to snap the pawn off. We'll just take the pawn with the queen. I could also play bishop e3, but Seems sort of silly. So I take the pawn back. Re restoring material equality. And um, we just have a space advantage due to the pawn e5. For once, I have a little bit more time than my opponent, which is nice. Where should I go? F2 rather than C2. There's also C4, which is actually not a bad square. Trying to stay more active. Why go to the passive squares? Stockfish loves these squares. I say this all the time, but it's it's notable how this particular engine it just really likes putting its queens on its queen on those squares. Slightly more exposed, but at the same time, like not that easy to attack queens on c4, c5, f4, f5. Many times very early on in the opening. Now it seems like white's just all over here, all over black, um, strategically. We've got a big advantage. I can even grab his bishop and, and have an advantage just based on the two bishops. This is a brave move, but very logical. Attempting to undermine my knight on on uh, on d6, but and destroy my center at the same time. But it does weaken him a lot. So it's definitely controversial. I'm opting not to take that bishop on c8. Now I'm hoping that I had something, but maybe I... Save dog is tough. This move I completely overlooked. Now I don't even have an advantage. It might just be worse, in fact.
everything burger, please. Everything's hanging. How about E6? Man, this is kind of dangerous. Drops a piece. Damn, he's everywhere at the same time. It's like... Uh, very, very double-edged. What do I do? Knight f7, rook d1, rook d1. Queen takes g3. Basically sacrificing everything. Then a very conservative move. Australia. <laughs> and where is my advantage gone? I don't have an advantage. It's just like nothing for white. Slightly worse. That's the best move. Probably. He's faster than me. Thirteen hundred in blitz. What? How does that work? There goes my G3 pawn. How is he 1300 in blitz? Does anyone understand how that's possible? I guess either way I'm lost here. Took the wrong pawn. Now it's a draw. So he's just winning if he takes the other way. There's no winning this. Not just winning. I mean maybe I some, maybe it's a draw. I'm not sure but this is just silliness now. I don't understand how Save a Dog is 1,300 in Blitz. Now he's offering a draw. I'm not allowed to offer draws anymore. I won. He won. He lost on time. Okay. Good win. Dude, what's up with your blitz rating? Like, how can you be 1300? <laughs> Alright, um. Baleful is up next. Nefidov was next. Alright, we'll take Nefidov. Sorry, Nefidov. You slipped up there in, in, the, in the queue, and I thought I was looking for you lower. I thought the game disappeared. Nefidov, I promised to, to take your challenge next. You can refresh the page to offer a draw. I don't think that works. I think you just can't offer for a few moves. Um, there's like a, a limit to how, how many draws you can offer within a certain period of time, Infinite Flash. The game against Caruana in 2006, move 11, I, was, I missed a win. I was better, and then he missed the win in the time scramble. I was sitting there and I saw it, I was like, oh my god, 
we were both in time pressure against Caruana, and yeah, I was better like the whole game, and then finally in time pressure, I I allowed this like ridiculous thing that I saw, but he didn't see it. Thank God. So it was a draw finally. Classic reverse Tarash. Infinite Flash Chess is claiming that's a bug. But I didn't think it was a bug, Flash Chess. I thought it was just like a rule, like when you offer a draw, you're not allowed to offer a draw for another five moves or something. Or some some sort of number of moves, whatever the arbitrary number is. Another donation. Okay, so knight takes d4, bishop c4, knight f3 check. That doesn't make sense. Baleful playing a little quickly. And I think he might be lost here. Just donated an exchange. You can refresh the page. You can offer the draw again. Alright, then maybe you're right and I'm wrong. Because I had no clue. It's possible you're right. I mean, I just kind of assumed that was something that Leech has implemented on purpose. But if you could refresh the page to be able to for a draw again, then, then I'm beginning to think that you're right. Um, that's just too too funny. Baleful play too fast. We'll agree to, to disagree. Nefidov is up next, and then Haberbaum, whoever else we can play before the time is up for today. Yeah, I mean, it makes a rule, like, there's no written rule in, in like, over-the-board chess about offering multiple draws, but it is extremely disruptive and distracting when people do that. Um, not to mention, like, immoral, but that's beside the fact. Um, basically, it would be a good rule if it were a rule. The problem is, like, honestly, in general, in, in normal over the board chess, uh, it's basically like a kind of un. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, there's no official rule about it. It's just that, I guess, the ethical rule is that you shouldn't offer a draw a second time until the position has changed significantly. Now, obviously, chess is a, is a dynamic game, so position can can like change dramatically in one move. There are situations where it would be legitimate to offer a draw two moves in a row um, because the position could change. You know, maybe you offer a draw, you're completely worse, and next minute the guy makes a mistake and, and you equalize, so you can offer a draw again. You know, still people would probably get pissed, but, but like ethically, you would probably be, you know, validated by that. Um,. Yeah, their little kids tend to do that, like offer draw, offer draw, offer draw, offer draw. It's it's like very annoying. I mean, you don't get a lot of adults who understand and you know, don't understand that that's distracting and and annoying. Um, but it can be a strategy to bother the opponent. Gamesmanship. I feel I was like sorry for slipping up. <laughs> what did you do? I'm the one who slipped up. I didn't remember to take your challenge. Or did you leave the queue or something? Never leave the queue, Nefidov. I always do the Apocalypse Now reference. Never leave the boat. Never get out of the boat. Sneaky moves. And check. Trade pieces when you're up material. Baleful just wasn't mentally prepared. He was, he just wasn't ready to play this game. He's playing too fast. Oh, you said he slipped up in the queue. I meant like, yeah, slipped upward. Not slipped up in the colloquial sense. Somehow he moved up. 
<laughs> He's like, I'm sorry. Sorry for slipping up, literally. All right. Baleful, too fast. So Nephilim is up next. Five plus three. Then we're going to play Haber Bomb. And hopefully we have time for like one of the one of the non-subscribers. Tomorrow night, five plus three. Casual Blitz Arena here on my channel. We're going to be playing... Um, two-hour Blitz Arena, as we do every Tuesday, either Blitz or Rapid. This week it's Blitz for New Year's. Guys, come by. It's 4.30 Eastern Time. Which player do you have the worst over the board score with? Um, well, I mean, there's nobody that has like massive numbers of wins against me and, and no draws or something. I've got a number of players who I'm like 0-3. I'm probably like 0-3 against. Um... As far as like the most wins, um, probably Alexander Ivanov because we, he's probably beat me like seven or eight times. But I also have wins and draws, you know, quite a few wins and draws against Ivanov. So at the end of the day, the score is he's, he has the most wins, but not the best score. Um, and some other players who I started playing a lot when I was coming up. But I don't know. It's a good question, Move 11. I think of like certain people who are like 3 and 0 against me. Um, Kaidanov is like 3 and 0 against me for example. There's not that many people who are like 3 and 0. There's probably someone out there who's like 4 and 0. I'm not really sure though. There aren't a lot of people who are 3 and 0 against me. Kaidanov comes to mind. There's probably a couple others, <laughs> at least. So we got the dragon. What's that? Is that Amazon again? The Amazon food truck? I got a Happy New Year from someone. It's nice. What if I don't play Bishop G7 at all? This is going to be my new system against Nephilim. We're just not going to develop our Bishop to G7 at all. We'll just start counterplay on the queen side immediately. The anti Nephilim system. Just don't even play Bishop G7. It's the hyper, the hyper hyper accelerated dragon, dragon dwarf. We can look at your record versus individual players. Well, I mean, there have to be some player, there has to be some player in like first Saturday Grandmaster tournaments in Hungary where I have a really bad score. But off the top of my head, I can't think of anyone who's like three. Ilinchich has a really good score against me. Um, Zlatko Lincic. He's I've never beaten him, although I have a bunch of draws. Um, you know, there's a lot of players like that where I've lost games and and drawn games and never won. Maybe this was inappropriate. That's inappropriate. Accelerated anti Nefidov. I don't have any Grandmaster norms. My rating got close to 2500, though. I was like 2475, probably, unofficially. But I lost them all. Um, so I was closer on the rating requirement than the norms. Rook takes c3, just sacking in exchange. Is it true that FIDE changed the rule that norms have an expiry period now? I don't know about that, Check the King. I've I've kind of given up. <laughs> At the moment, at least. Temporarily. Um, that's entirely possible. It would be a step in the right direction because they made title norms much easier than they used to be. So they'd probably be doing the right thing if they, if they did make that kind of rule. I would think. Very liberally sacking exchange here against Nefidov, who used no time for the whole game. Yeah, the norms were getting a little too easy to, to do, so 
hopefully they they maybe move a little bit more conservative in that respect they should make round robins again a requirement and I think that was that was a good idea but it's arbitrary I never I, I once came close to a GM norm I basically missed by half a point or point I missed by a point um, that's my closest well I'm making a piece here so Nefertov weakens himself knight takes e4 f takes e knight takes c3 check well, that's a weird line knight takes e4 pawn takes pawn pawn takes pawn that's kind of cool how is your material I'm down a rook. Did I see in the women's section in the World Blitz? 1800 WFM? No, I didn't. As I said earlier in the stream, I, I've had no time to like follow chess results. I've been struggling with some personal issues, so I haven't really been following anything. Um, trying to keep up with my stream, but other than that, I'm, I'm very lax in following what's going on. Chess Drake says the whole concept of norms is baffling. How is the more ca complicated norm system better than just, just sticking by rating? I mean, it's like a traditional thing, you know? Wait a minute here. Knight b3? Is that a useful move? I'm not down any rooks anymore. That's good. Nephita come almost instantaneously. What's happening here? Bishop c6. Anyway, I'll have to play f5 at some point. Today's Nefidov's Grandmaster like play. Two draws recently against me. Playing people from other countries is more difficult for some people. Okay, there have been a lot of requirements about having to have foreign players. One of the ideas is that in the norm system, you know, you, the title is International Whatever, International Master, International Grandmaster. So. The tournaments have to have players from many different countries, or at least a number of different countries. Otherwise, you're not really an international anything. If you play just people from your native country, um, the title is truly not international. So rating wouldn't be enough. Like you could never leave the state of New Jersey or whatever, wherever you live. You know, just play tournaments at the, um, you know, the one place where you live. You, you couldn't really be considered an international grandmaster or whatever what have you. Well, I mean, I think Infinite Flash Chess, it's not just South America. I mean, this has been something that's that's been going on for years in many different places. Arranged tournaments, you know, people helping other people to get their titles and stuff. That's, you know, cheating is part of the game, whatever the game may be. So Nefidov is managing to make, you know, make it possible for me to stay alive here. He's starting to struggle on time. I was down a rook at one point. Yeah, Kasparov's pushing his stupid rating system, but I'm not sure that will fly. I think this Kasparov rating is a little strange. 
arranged tournaments around the world are are a long running tradition. <laughs> My favorite are the ones that didn't actually happen. You know, it's boring when you just have the, you know, traditional like fix the results but really play the games. But I, I prefer, you know, when they like just <laughs> they just basically make up tournaments and just submit them on paper, tournaments that never actually happened. That's that's my personal favorite. Would you struggle now versus AFM over the board? Traditionally I don't I don't struggle against FMs. Um usually they're afraid of me. So I guess no. Um Most I know a lot of FMs who are terrified to play against me. So winning back in exchange here with knight f two. I thought I thought I was able to bail out. Um I mean my rating is still not that bad. I'm still ha higher than the average FM. I gave away a lot of rating points with draws in the last couple of years. Didn't lose too many games. So Nefedov losing back in exchange is actually down a pawn, so I think this is lost for White. I mean, he's just down down four pawns to two on the king side. Traveling very difficult for someone in a wheelchair, obviously. But you got to bring the foreign players to them, you know. You don't have to leave your country, but you can still, if you live in the United States, you can still play international tournaments. I mean, in the United States, it used to be a big problem, but it's much less the case now. There were there were traditionally very few international tournaments where you could have norm chances. Even in my my time. Hmm. I mean, maybe I should just play this this rook ending. I'm really sure. I'm not sure if this king is better on b2 or or if it's better on c1. Oh man, I missed a strong move. I think. All right, guys. There we're we're, we're tactically. Nefidov falls victim loses his final rook. A lot of rook action in this game. All right, we've got uh, time for two more games. I'm gonna play Haberbaum and then one other. No, I mean, there's so many more tournaments now. A lot of players are making titles in the United States without even like leaving the country. And that was, that was like unheard of before. In the 80s and 90s, it was like really, really rare to be able to not go to like Europe or something and become a Grandmaster, International Master. My last game was against Shinkovich, yeah. I was I was clearly better, but but he drew. I let him draw. I was clearly better. He's an old I am. He was a good player, you know, solidly over he was solidly over twenty one uh, twenty four. He was a twenty four fifty I am at his peak. But he's He's an older dude now, but I didn't uh, didn't find the right way to win. That was my last game. Hungarian Team Championship 2018. Maybe, no, maybe it was the Budapest Team Championship. Sorry, Budapest Team Championship. Haberbaum, is, is you here? It was a Nimzo. I was black in a Nimzo, and and Shikovich misplayed it, and he was worse. But I had some. He lost a pawn. It it was it was. I was just a pawn up, but my king was a little exposed, and he got to a queen end game, queen and rook end game where he had like a perpetual, or would have had a perpetual. So I was a little sloppy um, in that game. Haberbaum doesn't seem to be here, so we're going to cancel this, and uh, we'll take the other challengers, two last games. 
Move 11. And one of the other guys. Move 11 sneaks in the challenge. Fish Rack House did 10% of my income. Went to Twitch in December. This is it. Period for the new year, though. Nice, Fish Rack Cow. Donating 200 bits. There may be players of legit Grandmaster Strength, but never played in any tournament or joined any federation. No. No, Master Strength, maybe. But Grandmaster Strength, no. I mean, you don't have to really... Yeah, never played in any tournament who's Grandmaster Strength. You'd have to go to Gorky Park and, I don't know, you know, find the best. <laughs> but that would be like Blitz players, you know. Maybe Grandmaster Strength and Blitz, but over the board strength without playing a tournament? No. You could play, you could find Blitz Strength, Grandmaster Blitz Strength players, probably who are like lifetime Russian chess hustlers or something. I don't know, you know, who never really played in tournaments. But, but as far as like long strength, long game strength, you couldn't. Couldn't do that. Um, move 11. What am I going to do with you? Okay, what am I playing here? This is not... Oh, this is a variation. All right. Right, well, here we go. I have abuse stories to tell about Roman. Well, I wouldn't go that far. Roman condones someone selling a game that cost me money. I mean, that's why I really broke up with him. I mean, this is the major issue. I wouldn't call it abuse stories. He completely, like, advised someone to, like, buy a game or sell a game. I mean, and while I was working with him, that directly affected me. And, and, and it was, like, it was immoral. It cost me money. And I never... I never would work with them after that anymore. Um, it's just like you, you can't you can't openly condone people selling games. I mean, that's just ridiculous. I think abuse abuse story sounds a little bit <laughs> a little exaggerated. I don't know what that means. Um, you like you know someone arranges to buy a game and you're like advising that person whether they should do it or not and saying yeah you should go ahead and then advise them on how much they should ask or something like that it's basically what he did well these are ancient, ancient history stories yellow dragon an ancient an ancient story from way before you were born bishop takes c4 c takes d4 um So here we go with the the classic Vienna variation. I'm not going to name any names. This is a story from 20 years ago. Someone was offered money to sell a game and they basically called Roman up on the phone and and asked him like what he thought about it and how much they should they should ask you know I mean and this this cost me like a prize basically this person getting this free game and I watched it happen one of the players is like not at the board the whole game like talking on the telephone in the hallway and then losing you know I mean it was so disruptive that I actually talked to the arbiters and, and I wasn't the only one, you know. But it was difficult to prove what was actually happening. When you mean sell a game, you mean lose on purpose, absolutely. 
Losing on purpose to let the other person win. It happens, unfortunately. There's a lot of corruption in any in any sporting any sporting. Uh, imagine there's there's corruption in every sport. How much do you think a game is worth? I don't know. I guess it depends on the reason. <laughs> I don't know how much this game was worth, but I know it cost me like five hundred bucks. So it was worth five hundred bucks to me. Here, um. If the player who was favored to win, who should have won, who didn't sell their game, you know, had won or even drew, I would have won like 500 bucks. But because the underdog won through cheating, um, I ended up not winning a prize in this tournament. And I was obviously pretty upset about it. That was, that was 20 years ago. So I divorced Roman for bad moral judgment um all right b takes c queen a5 i played knight knight here before did we have another game here hypothetically well i guess it all depends on why someone would buy a game right were they trying to make a norm or did they just want to win to look cool <laughs> These are different motivations for people cheating. Now I'm going to end the stream here, guys. Um, after like the next game, so we played this with, we played this once before with Move Eleven. I'm just finishing up the stream, Yellow Dragoon. But feel free to challenge me sometime, you know. If you want to play, like, off-stream, definitely be happy to give you some some training games. Um, if, if I, you know, if I'm not working. A6. So this is my game from, from before. We played this before with 11. Let's see what his improvement is. This is a tournament game I had years ago. And white is, like, about equal. The free market. What just happened? I almost made a recapture. Pre-move, C takes B4. So this is his new move. Same as the old move. No. Um, I can't remember what Christian Sabo played. I thought that Sabo played queen takes queen against me in my tournament game. So we're down a pawn, but his pawns are mangled. We have the bishop pair. Should I just castle? I guess I should take on b5. It seems logical. Move 11 is better prepared this time. I think he, he researched this or something. Free market doesn't apply to selling chess games. <laughs> I don't think. That's just not right. You know, here interesting move eleven would be like bishop d seven. I mean could you try trade try to trade bishops and trade off my bishop here? Although that's kind of passive, right? Maybe I just play bishop c four. I feel like we had the same game before move 11, but something's different. It's the same, but different. How does that work? How can it be the same, but different? I mean, is black threatening F4 here? I guess if F4, I have various ways to not get my bishop trapped. Castles. Did we have the same exact game before? I 
Without Bob, it's so quiet in here, isn't it? He was really, really bad the other day, though. He was provoking Soltigo again. Soltigo is not going to be modding anymore for my stream. Large because of, largely because Bob was aggravating him. So, HTFP just gifted a tier 1 sub to the Yellow Dragoon. That's awesome. A master. Alright, so... This might be analysis. Wow, did this... Does that work? Is his knight trapped? What is going on? Like, Rook C1... I don't know why I'm thinking so long about this, actually. I know this is forced. But he's got Rook F7. Oh, that's why I'm thinking so long. Wait a minute. Oh my god. Oh man, what's going on? Rook C1, Bishop, Rook F7, Bishop C5. Man, this isn't working. And I trap his knight. Knight, knight in the corner. Man, did I just make a very stupid move? I think so. That's weird. I think I did something dumb. And I could be, I could be down a pawn in an ending. That's good. Of course, even rook takes a1, king takes f8, a4, king e7, rook c1, king d6, check, king c5, check. I mean, even that, that pawn down is probably a draw, which I might have to take, actually. I could do bishop takes g7 as well. Bishop takes g7, king takes g7, rook takes a1, king f6, a4, equal chances. Yeah, I don't think I have anything here. I don't see anything better. Just looks like a draw. He's got to get his bishop out with e5, bishop e6, but he has to watch. I mean, there's some ways you could lose. Magnus could definitely win this with white against anybody. Rook a3. Merle is one of the regulars plays a lot here. Sort of crazy solid. Shout out to Soltiga for his hard work on the stream. He did a lot of help. He's he's given a lot of help to the stream. Um, it's good to have Yellow Dragoon though. We don't have that many high rated players to watch my stream. I find that most high rated players are, you know, too egotistical to, to watch other players. Um, which is usually a bad thing, though. The other thing is people don't want to share their ideas. So that's another reason why there's not a lot of masters who watch other masters stream, because people are selfish about sharing their information. But anyway, cheers to Yellow Dragoon. Um, Nefidov, all you guys, Happy New Year in advance. So Move 11 basically played what I figured you know, we would see here. And... I've got his rook and bishop pretty much tied up, but now I have a back rank thing. So maybe it was all, um, all a fantasy because of the back rank. I'm going to be unable to make progress. Now he's got a good king position too. Oh man. If I had one extra move, like h4. I, I probably would be in good shape trying to win this, but I don't know what I'm going to do, because... Joanna tries, what's up? I'm going to be closing down my stream. If you're streaming, then best of luck. Happy New Year. I'm just getting out of here. This will be our last game for today, guys. Did I say that? I said I would play one more game. Alright, I'll play one more game. Haberbomb's still there. I'll play Firth. Actually, I should play Haberbomb because he's a subscriber, but I already, I already missed him. Um, I'm screwed here because uh, <laughs> cause of the back rank weakness. F4, triple exclaim. No, creating a, a pass pawn for, for the opponent here could be a dangerous thing to do, but I, I feel like doing something crazy. This is just a draw, though. This isn't actually a very good move. Maybe it's alright. Anyway, let's try to confuse him when I have no time. You picked up the Sveshnikov. Good opening. I mean, I think that the Nidorf and the Sveshnikov are the best. The only really good Sicilians. 
Um, obviously, Magnus got it from you. I don't have any big plans. How are you guys doing? Joanna's talking to Fuchsia. Um, Happy New Year's. We've got uh, a stream coming up tomorrow. Now, move 11 took on F4. But I guess I'm living in a fantasy world here if I think I'm better. It's a serious fantasy world going on. I could actually be worse very easy. But I, I don't mind. Um, this move I missed entirely. That's good. That's always good. <laughs> Just entirely miss like a crushing move. Nice. So now I have to try to hold a draw. Pretty awkward situation. But I think move 11 misplayed the move order. He should have played bishop takes g2 first. Maybe this isn't bad either. But I feel like I should be able to hold. And he has the initiative now. Bishop takes g2 first seemed better. Blaze Winterborn. Alcohol pizza sounds good. Not not all that healthy, but who cares? It's New Year's. So I'm just trying to stay alive here. Happy to stay alive. I mean the chess game. No, I'm I'm staying I'm staying and this is gonna be like one of the most boring New Year's for, for me ever. Because I'm literally like trapped. Literally trapped in a... What am I doing? Move 11 could be playing for the loss here. It's actually surprisingly hard to... This is a stupid move. Um, it was surprisingly hard... A very stupid move by me. Surprisingly hard to... Uh, for the third time, I'll try to say it. I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> surprisingly hard to remember what I was going to say. Yeah. So a5 might have been a different story. Maybe I'm winning if I play a5. But I think without a5 now it's a draw. Missed my window of opportunity. Move 11 missed playing though. He, he allows me to play a5. Now he has to be careful. He could actually be lost here. Probably not. He's going to go over and get that one. I'm going to get this one. It's a race. He'll probably lose on time. Unfortunately, this is a draw. I'm just not going to be able to, like, I'm not going to be able to, oh my god, I meant to play king f6, it doesn't matter, <laughs> it's still a draw, it doesn't matter, it, it still would have been a draw, it was hopeless. Now I'm not so sure, yeah, of course it's still a draw. Now I'm not so sure. Can move 11 lose this? Probably there's still no way to win this, right? Am I being stupid? There is a way to win this. Is there a way to win this? Still no way to win this. Oh, man. He lost on time in a draw position, so king f7 is still a draw. There's a lot of draws. <laughs> Chess is a draw. Anyway, um, how do I win after king f7? 
Oh, it's a win, apparently. I don't understand. How is this a win? What is going on with this? King f7 is a win. Okay, I did not understand this. Wow. That's crazy. I even declared it a draw. <laughs> Wait, how is this a win? How do I drive his bishop off the diagonal? Okay, I go here. King five. Somewhere. Anywhere. That's what I'm wondering. How is it a win? So apparently I can just play like bishop g8. That's how it's a win. Wow. That's really insane. It's just sick. I thought it was still a draw. Wow. So it's just the win. You can't stop it. There's no other... There's no other diagonal. So Nefidov was right. He said bishop e4 was indeed decisive. Sorry, Nefidov, which move? 37 bishop e4. Yeah, I just totally missed it, man. I didn't see bishop e4 at all. Is it decisive? Oh, it's... Wait. The previous move, here. Instead of bishop c2. I didn't see bishop e4 check. Yeah, you were right. I just didn't see it. All right. So, I'm just going to play this last game, because Haberbaum and Yellow Dragon are too long. I'm just going to play this guy, this 5-3, and I'm going to close down the stream, guys. Um, Haberbaum, I offered you a chance to play before, but you missed it. So, don't please don't be hurt. Um, I want to give one player who's not a subscriber a chance to play one game today. And we're going to resume tomorrow night with... Uh, we're going to be resuming one one more time tomorrow, our first stream of the day. Um, now I've got to go visit my mom in the hospital. That's why I've got to leave. So it's a good reason I'm I'm leaving the stream. I have absolute only excuse I would ever use to see my mom in the hospital to cut you guys short. Um, so it's absolutely important stuff. I'm gonna play this five plus three. New new opponent. Give somebody because every 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 challenge was a stream uh, subscriber. Just give someone else a chance to play. And uh, we'll catch you guys tomorrow in a arena. Blitz Arena 5 plus 3. Um, tomorrow night at 4.30 on New Year's Day. Thanks, everybody. Good, good luck to the other streamer here, Joanna Tries. She was the only other streamer. Yellow Dragon, do you stream? You stream before, right? We have been streaming lately. Have you? I've never been to Japan. Um, I've never been to really anywhere in Asia, actually. I just, I just like, yeah, I just like pandas, the Chinese thing. So, Pepe Lu is a great stream. I have checked out his stream a couple times. All right, c5, everybody plays this move, a6. What, um, plays Winterborn? You don't know me. Russia is mostly in Asia. I haven't been to the Asian part. <laughs> um, but you don't know anything about Russia. Anyway, Nefdov. The troll faction. You hope all all trolls die out. So rook to b8. We've faced this move before. I think this exact position has arisen many times. Yeah, 
Yeah, I have a big story about C5. That's my painful loss from 1992 against Alexander, Alexandra, <laughs> against Alejandro Rios from Colombia. I had a really, really good start to a tournament, and then this like 80 move game against this guy where he was just dead, and I lost, and it basically like ruined my whole event. Um. So now another interesting move is Knight A4, but I think I'm gonna try it this way. Surprisingly, C, you know, A6 seems like a natural move. A lot of people play that, but it's just horrible for black. Or maybe I just let him off the hook with this last move, actually. It seems like black might not be that bad after this. I had some games with, uh... Who was it now? Um... Who played a game very similar to this against me? You guys remember? Param... Param... Parmenides, I think. One of the semi-regulars in my stream. So black has really gotten away with something here. Almost equalized. That's terrible. I did something dr just dramatically wrong in this sequence. After bishop f4, rook a8, I played knight b3. There has to be a much better move here. I guess you could try knight a4, which is an idea that I have used before. It makes a lot of sense to like clamp down on b6 and stop break. Do I know any good coaches? Depends on what level you're talking about. Are you talking about like coaches for beginners or coaches for people like you? I have to think about it. I don't get a lot of people asking me that question. I think you should get a really, really professional teacher at your level. Um, someone stronger than me, obviously. But not just like a random grandmaster, you know. It would be best to find someone who's like a prof really a professional coach to master level players. A Mikkel Chison or, or someone like that. Queen d2. So what's this? He's sacrificing a pawn? Interesting. Wow. I mean, this doesn't seem sound, but my b2 pawn is hanging. Yeah, I mean, I think at your level where you're like pushing 2300, I mean, you should really, really try to find a player who's a specialist, you know, a, tra a trainer. Um, I mean, in your country, I don't know if like Baburin is, is a trainer. Um, I guess I should take the pawn, huh? Guys, last game, I'm going to be back. So he teaches kids. He's a chess player. Well, Sam is kind of a scientific, theoretical. What is Sam Collins doing, by the way, that he's he's not available? Is he doing something else outside of chess? This is interesting. Black played a kind of long-term pawn sack here. And, uh, okay, I have queen c5. That's probably a nice move. Giving black time to unravel and getting out of the pin. the good chess players quit chess. It's a constant problem. Keep losing. Losing, <laughs> losing all the 
the best chess players to other things. Thanks, guys, for watching the stream. I'll try to think about that for you, Yellow Dragoon. I can think of someone who's really appropriate for your level um, and, and, and a good teacher. Because, again, I don't really get a lot of people asking me, hey, you know, I'm, I'm around 22, 2300. I, I've actually, I've had a few people I've worked with who are 22, 2300, but I'd be, you know, you'd be kind of pushing above my level. Um, I think, you know, you'd be best to find a strong grandmaster who's a specialist trainer. Um, Firth. Last game for today, guys. The stream ended up being two and a half hours after all. <laughs> I tried. Now he's got bishop takes c5, knight takes c5, knight d4. But that's all right. That, that's a beautiful variation, actually. Knight c5, bishop takes, rook takes, knight d4. Takes c8, knight takes g2 check. I mean, e2 check, king h1, bishop takes, takes, knight takes, takes. He like, goes into the rook end game with, uh, with a pawn up or something. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Take. Someone said take. Well, I mean, I just can't allow um, you know, him to uncover his knight from c6. So I can't be playing something like knight to c5 that leaves me prone to some sort of discovery. Stream a lesson together. It's a shame that Dvoretsky passed away. He was obviously like the most famous chess trainer in the world. Um, why can't I take here? So he's got to take with a minor piece. The bishop, I guess, to avoid, you know trading too many pieces. So there's two ways to skin this cat. I can take here. This way I trade rooks and the set of minor pieces. Getting to a, what should be like pretty straightforward position. But this way I get out of the way of my, my B pawn. For a credible game though. Now what do I do? E4? E4 is probably a little early. E4, E5, E4. E4, E5, bishop, D2, knight, D6. That's kind of a problem. This could be compensation for black, a little bit of compensation for black here. He's getting so active. Kaidanov. I was just talking about people. <laughs> Were you here for this part of the... JCS, were you here for this part of my um, of my stream? Right, the Kaidana was like the only person who's three and zero against me. One of the only players who's three and zero against me. I always play horribly against Kaidana. Um, or is that just a coincidence? I wouldn't recommend Perlstein. He's definitely not good stylistically for for uh, for Yellow Dragoon. Um, Kaidana would, would be a decent suggestion if you're doing online lessons. Let's get the, the pawns on the right color and then penetrate with the king to c4. Yeah, I meant Astana. But he's, you know, he's like me. But I was thinking Yellow Dragoon should get a really, like, really strong trainer who specializes in master level students.
All right, so we're making progress. Furf is pretty good. This game took forever. We're going to make progress now, though. I think he's just lost. Principle of two weaknesses. F6 and the A pawn. All right. Nice try. <laughs> he's given everything he has, but now it's over. Sacked his F pawn. Two pass pawns. All right, guys, we're going to close the stream. I will be back tomorrow. Yeah, Dubrovsky. All right, guys, I will be back tomorrow. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing to my stream. Thanks for the support from Jim, Fish Rack Cow, Spectacular Camel, everyone, and last week as well. Did I ever match? Did I ever mention my Myers Briggs type? I don't know. You guys are welcome for the stream. Good luck with your own streaming, Joanna Tries and uh, Yellow Dragoon. I'll try to try to think of chess coaches that might work for you. Um, I will wish you guys once again a happy new year and I'll be back tomorrow for New Year's Day um, holding a Blitz Arena at 4.30 Eastern Time Erica SP and everyone happy new years absolutely have a great year and thanks for supporting the stream and subscribing I will see you guys later bye 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 guys take care